I saw your video on that one. You better believe it. I, oh, here. There it is. There it is. I know. He's got a pump on, so I'm not going to. That's unfair. It's unfair. Can't be. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Poppy Al's walking his pump. Yeah. So I got to work the beat. You think walking your dog gets girls? Try walking your pump. Yeah. <laughs>
And like you're a mom, so for you not to have an ego, do you think you're important to your husband and your kids and everybody at business finishing school? Like, of course you're important. So to say no ego, it's, and, and Ashley, it's, it's an educated way of society to keep you controlled. Listen, I think passion destroys businesses. You're, you're being controlled by circumstances versus, you know what? I am thankful to the gifts and talents and, and, the, and I, I do have a good self-esteem and importance because I'm an important person because of the gifts I've been given, I can really go out and help people. The reason why you have that emotional, who is this guy think he is, because just like you, I was trained that pride and ego were so bad. Right, absolutely. And I think the fear behind all of this and what keeps people imprisonment of not accepting the ego and not accepting um, that they can be powerful is they have this false belief that that's going to elevate them in their minds to make them think that they're actually better than everyone else around them, which is a different level than what it is that you're speaking of. It's and conceit. Say, People are saying pride and ego when they really mean conceit. Pride is more like I appreciate myself for the gifts and talent, but conceit thinks you're better. So a conceited person, or what I call it becomes the villain, the villain personality thinks they're better than everybody because they don't realize, they don't see they have weaknesses. See, a, a hero realize they're not perfect. That's where humility and courage comes from. And uh, the, the, final, the final stuff I could leave you guys with this, especially if you're in scarcity. The reason why we don't move forward is because we're scared of things. Uh, the toughest thing to do in life is make a decision because you're always afraid that you're gonna make the wrong decision. And I could tell you my end goal of where I'm living today if you told me this at 20 years old, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have believed you. But it's all these unknowns in the journey. Instead of being afraid of it, why don't you go and put yourself in the position to as, any, as many unknowns as you could embrace and then just ride the journey of where you're going to go and reaching the, the goals and dreams of your life. And that's that. So I, my goal to you guys, my, my message is to embrace the unknowns because that is where everything is at. Oh, it's awesome. awesome. Of course. Well, I'm taking your advice because you said find your vehicle. So what is it? Whether it's writing, video, or whatever, and go for that. So I'm like, okay. So we've been doing writing and email, and I've been doing the phone calls. That just, I, I wasn't feeling that, yeah, and I began yeah. to hate my job. I'm like, well, I could do a, a daily five-minute lunch business tip. So I started doing that, and I had, could you not, I've had the stomach bug all week. And the moment that camera comes on, and I'm doing these podcasts, or I'm doing the whatever, I, I, I'm not in pain. I'm not sick. Right. My skin different my hair looks different my husband's even was like man you look amazing what has changed what are you doing and I'm like well I'm I guess I'm just walking into what it is that God has laid out for me and owning it and taking control of it yeah you look differently you're, you're vibrant in a higher state you're you're your true hero and everybody benefits and then you feel good about it and, and you feel you feel exactly the way you were created to be or you're supposed to be awesome thank you so much have a beautiful day thanks Ash God bless Dude, yes. <laughs> All right, good. 255. Because I just, you, you got to cut. You got to cut. 250, and that'll give me two uh, pauses. Dude, it's a science. And now, and I went a little bit faster. So if I get down to 250, then I could, I could stretch it out. And, that's exactly and they give me five minutes, and hopefully they're like five minutes. And then when I'm ready, I'm like, dude, I'll do a 20. Let's do it right. I, there you go. Wait, this How about this? Where I go, so no, we'll do the three minutes, right? So I, I'll, then I'll do the five minutes in front of the massive crowd. I'm like, hey, I'll do the 20 right now. And if you're not satisfied or didn't change your life, I'll pay for your ticket here. Then everybody will be like, yeah, let's do it. Right. You know? That puts me on the spot where, you know, it's the ballsy move. It's like, yeah, we'll do it. And that, that might be the, the one risk take that, that creates the unknown opportunity. We're always go looking for this unknown. Cool. That was good. Thank you guys for pushing me. That's another thing. Why do people think I'm so self-pushed and driven? It's like I'm why driven. No need to speak up. But I think when you're doing big things, you're always caught with the, the conflict of, I think it's just that pain. At the end of the day, you know, we'll, uh, we'll win our race. You know, I'm not, I'm not racing against anybody else.